students welcome to the class welcome to the class on indian polity and constitution friends today as we all know the tspsc has released group 1 notification we are starting a series on indian polity and constitution and this series consists of 15 episodes wherein i will be dealing with important topics related to indian polity and constitution which are useful for your prelims so my intention is here to make sure you get as many as questions correct in your prelims with respect to indian polity and constitution today in this class i will be introducing to you the syllabus of all the 15 classes as well as the schedule as well as we'll start with class 1 as we all know we are dealing with indian polity and constitution now what is constitution constitution is nothing but or indian constitution is nothing but it is a a written codified document it is a written codified document which consists of certain provisions which consists of certain provisions like articles schedules etc indian constitution is the primary law of the land it is the primary law of the land indian constitution is the primary law of the land which is a a written codified document which consists of certain provisions like your articles schedules etc sir if indian constitution is a primary law and which is a codified document what is polity the practical application the practical application of this constitution of this constitution is called indian polity the application of the constitution the application of the constitution is called indian polity to sum up the constitution or the indian constitution is a written codified document which consists of certain provisions like your articles schedules etc the practical application of this constitution is called polity and the purpose of this application the purpose of this application is for good governance for good governance the purpose of the application is for governance not only governance the purpose of this application of the constitution is for maintaining an order in the society that is your social order that is your social order not only for social order the purpose of application of the constitution is to achieve inclusive development inclusive development inclusive development see look at this the purpose of the application of the constitution which is called polity the objective of polity the procedure of applying the constitution of india the purpose of this is to ensure to bring governance in the country to ensure inclusive development to ensure sustainable development to ensure order in the society this is the primary law of the land my dear friends this constitution which is the primary law of the country is not only with you till you write the exam but also stay with you even after you becoming the officers even after you becoming an rdo even after you are part of the bureaucracy in telangana you have to align with the constitution of india so constitution stays with us till you know your retirement even after retirement it will be with with us only so this is the indian polity 
and constitution my dear friends as we are getting into deeper in the subject as i told you before i wish to introduce syllabus of indian polity and constitution for group 1 as well as the schedules what is the schedule for the classes we have 15 set of classes to complete indian polity and constitution for prelims group 1 so today in this class we are going to do three things point number 1 we will look at the syllabus of group 1 polity constitution prelims as well as mains just give a glimpse two we will see the schedule of what are the subjects we are going to do what are the topics we are going to include in this 15 classes and three we are going to start chapter 1 or topic 1 today itself so to introduce the syllabus of tspsc group 1 syllabus explanation for tspsc let us continue and see polity and constitution polity and the constitution is there in prelims as well as your mains so let us see where in prelims we have indian polity and constitution where in mains you have indian polity and constitution see the advantage of indian polity and constitution is it is scoring it is scoring i can assure you 80% of the questions you can answer it when you when you are thorough with the subject it is not like any other subject where it is very difficult to remember but indian polity and constitution is scoring and it is very easy to remember so don't neglect this subject because it might get you that one extra mark to get you rdo or deputy collector so that that was that is what i mean so let's continue with the syllabus now chalo right so this is the pattern of the group 1 exam which we have recently released by tspsc uh, 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 organization so we have prelims test we have two two things here see there are two stages stage 1 is prelims stage 2 is written examination that is called mains now in the stage 1 you have prelims where you have 150 marks 150 questions 150 minutes 150 marks 150 questions and 150 minutes and this prelims is called general studies men mental ability all 150 questions here are only based on objective type mcqs multiple choice questions now our 15 sessions or our classes in the future will be useful for you directly in the prelims what are the topics which we are going to cover in the prelims if you look at the prelims syllabus if you look at the prelims syllabus here yeah if you look at the prelims syllabus here you have something called current affairs our classes starting from today will be helpful for your current affairs regional and also national which covers polity related current affairs polity related current affairs for example see we have president of india elections in the year 2022 in the year 2022 we have president of india elections and that procedure of electing the president of india is discussed directly in article 54 and article 55 of the constitution so article 54 and article 55 talks about the elections to the president of india now this as a part of our our topics we will be covering so in this way we are going to cover the current affairs which are directly given in point number 1 of your prelims test of your prelims test now not only this we have something called eighth point if you look at the eighth point here it directly says indian constitution and polity indian constitution and polity governance and public policy your ninth point right issues right you have right issues here which is directly linked to your polity syllabus we have topic number topic number 1 topic number 2 topic number 
and topic number four. We have four direct topics from Indian polity and constitution, which we are going to see in this sessions. We have 150 questions divided by total 13 topics, right? So, minimum eight questions per each topic. We have eight here, we have eight here, so eight plus eight that is 16 and this is a subtopic. So, I will take only four questions and even current affairs is a subtopic. So, I will take four questions. So, this class will be helpful for you to directly, directly ensure you get almost 24 questions correct. 24 questions correct. That is almost 15 percent of our uh, entire MCQs. So, I am just telling you how important these classes are. Now, coming to mains, if you look at the main syllabus here, we have a paper, if you look at the main syllabus here, we have a paper called paper 3. Paper 3 is directly linked to Indian society, constitution, governance, which is about, you know, 150 marks. 3 hours is given, 150 marks. Now, this prelims based classes are also useful for your paper 3. Which topics in paper 3? Which topics in paper 3? These topics. Paper 3, subtopic 2, constitution of India directly linked. Evolution of the constitution, drafting committee, constitutional philosophy, you have salient features, amendment, basic, basic structure doctrine, fundamental rights, you have something called directive principles of state policy, fundamental duties, rule of law, all this we are going to cover. And thirdly, system of government, this is parliament, parliamentary system, central government, state government, uh, legislative privileges, this is article 105, article 105. So, you have judiciary, Indian judiciary in India, judicial activism, independent character of judiciary, tribunals, fast track courts, subordinate courts, all this we cover. And very important and you can expect a question from here, that is your center state relations, 73rd, 74th amendment act, that is your Panchayati Raj institutions and municipalities, as well as you know, water disputes, resolutions, etc. So, these topics we will be covering in this sessions of Indian polity and constitution for group 1 prelims. Now, what is the schedule for 15 classes? So, we have total 15 classes starting from today. So, we have 15 sessions. Now, you have session 1. If you look at session 1, which we are going to see it today, and we have historical background of the constitution, separation of powers theory, separation of powers theory is given by Montesquieu. Montesquieu. We have evolution of the constitution of India, that is the drafting committee, uh, making of the constitution. These topics we will be dealing with today after this completion of topics. Two, the second thing we are going to, second lesson or second topics which we are going to discuss is the salient features of the Indian constitution, the source of the Indian constitution, the schedules of the Indian constitution. And these are the three major topics we are going to see in second topic. Now, coming to third one, we will be covering preamble, part one, part two, that is part one is union and its territories and its union and its territories. We have part two, Indian citizenship, Indian citizenship and as well as Indian Citizenship Act of 1955 and recent amendment to it in the year 2019. Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019. These questions we will be covering and all these are expected questions. I am sure few questions directly or indirectly come from our topics. Now, I have fourth and fifth classes as fundamental rights 1, fundamental rights 2. See, there are two important topics which you need to give preference. There are two important topics which you have to give preference 
with respect to Indian polity and constitution. One, one is your fundamental rights. One is your fundamental, fundamental rights. One is your fundamental rights. And the second important topic we have is your parliament, is your parliament. So, these are the two major topics you need to focus on. These are the two major topics you need to focus on. So, now, so because fundamental rights is so important, we are doing two sessions for fundamental rights. Okay, fundamental rights is very important and you can directly expect a question from fundamental rights topic. So, we will be doing almost 20 MCQs, 20 objective type questions. 20 MCQs, 20 objective type questions. And the sixth one we have is directive principles of state policy as well as fundamental duties. We have directive principles of state policy as well as fundamental duties. D directive principles of state policy is discussed in part 4 of the constitution and fundamental duties part 4a, part 4a of the constitution. Okay. So, this is your sixth topic. Now, coming to seventh topic, we have something called President, Vice President and Council of Ministers including your PM. So, all this, this is part of your parliament, this is part of your parliament and this is covered in your seventh topic, President, Vice President as well as your Council of Ministers. Now, coming to eighth topic. As I told you before, parliament is very important for your exam along with fundamental rights. We will be dealing parliament also more than one topic. We will be taking it more than one. So, eighth topic we have is parliament legislative procedure. So, in this parliament legislative procedure, we will be discussing certain bills, money bill, financial bills constitutional amendment bills, financial bill type 1, type 2, how the bills are passed in the parliament, what is first house, what is second house, so what is parliamentary committees, so all the questions will be based on that. And secondly, we have something called parliament financial procedure and anti-defection law. So parliament financial procedure, we have budget, how budget is passed and anti-defection law, we have to cover this in schedule 10 also, 10 schedule also talks about that. So, these are the two things we will be dealing in ninth topic. Now, coming to 10th topic, we have governor and state legislature. We have something called governor and state legislature, governor as well as state legislature, governor as well as state legislature. So, this is part 6 of the constitution, part 6 of the constitution, right. Now, look at this 11th important uh, uh, we, uh, topic we have, emergency provisions in India. As part of the emergency provisions, we will be covering three emergencies, national emergency, state emergency and, and we have financial emergency. So, state emergency is also called president rule. The 12th topic we have is center state relations. So, center state relations also, we have three major things, ma. we have three major things. What are they? Legislative relations, administrative relations, as well as your financial or financial relations. These three relations we cover as well as the commissions or the amendments associated with that center state relations. The 13th one we have is local governance, where we cover Panchayati Raj institutions and municipalities and municipalities. And the 14th topic we have is Indian Judiciary. As part of Indian Judiciary, we focus on four elements. One, Supreme Court. Two, High Court. Three, Subordinate Court. And four, Tribunals or Tribunals. Fast Track Courts they are called. So, these are the four topics we cover in this Indian Judiciary topic. Now, lastly, we have constitutional, non-constitutional bodies. So, what are the meaning of constitutional bodies? Those authorities 
which get power and authority directly from the constitution is called constitutional bodies. What is a non-constitutional body? Those bodies which get authority by a law made in the parliament, by a law made in the state legislature. They are established by a law. They are called non-constitutional bodies. For example, constitutional bodies, we have Election Commission of India, Union Public Service Commission, Finance Commission, etc. For non-constitutional bodies, we have Central Information Commission, National Human Rights Commission, National Commission for Women, National Commission for Minorities, etc. So, these are the topics which we are going to cover. These are the entire topics in this series of Group 1 Prelims, English Medium, TSPSC for upcoming exam or, or for notification. So, now today in this class, let us start the first topic today. Look at the first question. Look at the first question revolving around the topic 1. So, topic 1 to discuss the historical background, separation of powers theory and evolution of the constitution of India. Now, evolution of the constitution of India is also called the making of the Indian constitution. Question number 1. Which of the following is or are the nature, the nature of separation of powers theory? See, separation of powers theory is given by a French philosopher Montesquieu in his book, The Spirit of Laws. In his book, the spirit of laws. Now, let us solve this question. Statement number 1. According to separation of powers theory, the state is divided into different organs. Each organ has a unique function to perform. All organs work together. If you look at these three statements keenly, it says options are 1 only, 1, 2 only, 1, 3 only, 2, 3 only or all are correct. Firstly, there is no none of the above. Secondly, one as a option is there in almost four options. So, one should be correct and it is correct because according to separation of powers theory, the state is divided into three major organs, legislature, executive and judiciary and judiciary. Now, this is correct. 2. Each organ has a unique function to perform. Absolutely correct. Legislature to make laws, executive to implement the laws and judiciary to review the laws, to review those laws. So, these two are correct. So, uh, as these two are correct, you can actually eliminate these two options. Now, look at the third one. All organs work together. If you look at the separation of powers theory as a theory, not in India, but as a theory, every organ is unique and do not work, interfere with each other. It is USA where the separation of powers theory is in absolute terms. In India, separation of powers theory is not in absolute forms terms because it is in diluted term because in India legislature and executive work together but I am not talking here in terms of India I am talking here in terms of the true nature of separation of powers theory if you see the true nature of separation of powers theory all organs work together is a wrong statement so the answer is B 1 and 2 is a correct statement Look at the next question. This question is linked to historical background. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Regulation Act of 1773 is the first step towards centralization of administration in India. Absolutely correct statement. And Charter Act of 1833 is the final step towards centralization of administration in India. The first step is 1773 Act and the final step is your Charter Act of 1833. 
where according to 1833 Act, East India Company has purely become a political organization, administrative organization. It is not a commercial entity. So, first statement is correct. Look at the second statement. Government of India 1935 introduced diarchy in the center. See, diarchy is actually introduced by Government of India Act 1919, which is called Montague Chelmsford Reforms. Even though diarchy was introduced by 1919 Government of India Act, it is introduced in provinces. It is introduced in provinces. So, in the center, it is introduced by Government of India Act 1935. Not only that, Government of India Act 1935 abolished diarchy in the provinces and in introduced in the center. So, answer is C. Both the statements are correct. You need to be very careful in understanding the words given in the question. Each and every word is important when you are solving an objective type question. See, till here it may look wrong, but because of this word, this statement is correct. So, that is the meaning. Our intention through these classes is to ensure that you keep all the questions, you go with all the questions correctly. That is the meaning. So, next question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. So, wherever you feel that this word is important, please round up it so that it will be easy. The first public service commission in India was set up in 1926 on the recommendations of Government of India Act 1919. See, Government of India Act 1919 recommended to create a public service commission. So, as part of 1919 Government of India Act, which is also called, which is also called Montague Chelmsford Reforms, a public service commission was established in 1926 on the recommendations of Lee Commission. On the recommendations of Lee Commission. What we all know now today is your Union Public Service Commission discussed in Article 315. Article 315 of the Constitution talks about Union Public Service Commission. Look at the second statement. So, first statement is correct. Look at the second statement. The Government of India Act 1935 provided for setting up Public Service Commission in the provinces. And this is talking about State Public Service Commission. Today it is called State, but in British area they are called provinces. So, even this is correct, answer is C. Do not think it is an easy question. Even today in the Indian Constitution, State Public Service Commission is discussed in Article 315. So, Article 315 talks about three things, Union Public Service Commission, State Public Service Commission, Joint Public Service Commission, okay, Joint Public Service Commission, very, very important for the exam. Look at the question number three. Yeah, which act, which act is called, is also called Act of Good Government in India, which of the following is called Act of the Good Government in India. Is it Indian Councils Act 1861? No way. It is Government of India Act 1909? No way. Is it Government of India Act 1935? Maybe. Is it Government of India Act 1858? Maybe. Meaning, from student perspective, you might feel two options correct because of their importance. Government of India Act 1935 is majorly very important because 70 percent of Indian constitution is directly taken from Government of India Act 1935. And Government of India Act 1935 is an act which is made after thorough consultations of all the stakeholders like Indians. But this is not the correct answer. The answer is Government of India Act 1858. Because Government of India Act 1858 is the first act given by the British Queen or the British Parliament after taking direct control, after taking direct control from East India Company, from East India Company. 
because government of india act 1858 is the first act given by the british parliament after taking the control from east india company this act is also called act of good government in india act of good government in india and this act is result of sepoy mutiny 1857 the major reason for this act is sepoy mutiny 1857 look at the next question we have the recommendations of the simon commission are reflected in which act so simply you can easily directly answer this question why simon commission was established in 1927 simon commission was established in 1927 so the recommendations of simon commission should be reflected only after the act of passed after 1927 correct so 1919 cannot be the answer 19 not 9 cannot be the answer it may be none of the above or government of india act 1935 can is there any important act after 1935 there is no important administrative act after 1935 so the answer is b simon commission was you know established in 1927 for two reasons one to study 1919 government of india act study and provide recommendations for the next act on the recommendations given by simon commission three round table conferences took place in london three round table conferences took place in london so even the answer for this is government of india act 1935 see there are two things we want you all to uh, know from these sessions one we provide the expected questions for tspsc group 1 two how the questions are framed how you need to answer what is the elimination process these are the things also you need to focus here look at the next question we have when is the constitution day of india celebrated what a easy question constitution day of india celebrated this is also called law day this is also called law day when is the constitution of india celebrated november 26 1948 now january 26 1950 november 26 1949 january 26 1930 see january 26 1950 is called republic day so this is not the answer now january 26 1930 cannot be the answer because it is the result of lahore session so this is not the answer it may be c or a now look at this the only difference we have here is years no constitution day is celebrated only when the constituent assembly has adopted or passed the constitution of india when did the constitution passed by the constituent assembly november 26 1949 answer is c answer is c absolutely answer is c so these are the questions we have uh, for topic 1 that is your historical background and separation of powers theory and evolution of the indian constitution we will meet again in the next class with topic 2 that is the features source and schedule of the indian constitution till then thank you very much namaste jai hind